Welcome to the VB Toolbox. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to establish a connection to a Microsoft SQL database using Visual Basic.net. For this tutorial, it is expected that you already have a SQL Server that is operational and accessible, uh, and the necessary credentials to log into that server. Uh, what I'll be using in my environment is uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 Express and I've set up a test database here called SQL Apps as well as uh, a basic forum structure including a members table, forum boards, threads, and replies and as you can see I can from my management studio I can already query that database it is functional and working. So what I want to do is first off just establish a connection to the database from my application. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go back to my uh, Visual Studio start page here. From here I'm going to create a new project and it'll be a Windows, Windows Forms application. I'm going to call it SQL App and hit OK. And that will generate a project template for us. Um, from here, uh, what I'm going to do is create a SQL Connection class. Um, you can uh, put all your SQL code in your main form if you want. I just like to, to break it out to kind of keep it clean. So in our Solution Explorer, if you can't see that, click View and Solution Explorer. You should be able to get to that. Uh, click on your project header and then right click and add a new class. And I'm going to name my class uh, SQL Control, SQL Control. Then I'll click Add. That creates a new class outline for us. Now, the first thing to connecting to a SQL database is making sure that you have imported uh, the proper library. So I'm going to start by saying Imports System. Dot SQL, I'm sorry, dot data, <laughs> dot SQL, and then imports system dot data dot SQL client. All right, and with those libraries accessible, we can now create a SQL connection and our SQL command to connect to uh, our database and query it. So. We'll start out by adding a public SQL con, that'll be our connector, as a new SQL connection. And um, we're going to have to supply it uh, some values. You can do it either directly here or uh, in a new sub. I'm just going to do it uh, right here and kind of kill two birds with one stone. So I'm going to click with and open some curly braces and supply a connection string. And this connection string is very important for establishing our connection. So um, we have to supply uh, at least four parameters here to get a connection to our database. One, a server pointer, and then a database pointer, and then we have to supply our credentials for connecting to that database. So. Um, first thing we'll do is supply a server and your server is going to be your server and instance that you're trying to connect to in my case um, my server instance is on an old minecraft uh, box and so it's minecraft backslash sql express is my instance so that will be my server name so I'll say Minecraft backslash SQL Express. <clears throat> now each parameter in this string will be separated uh, by a semicolon, so we'll add a semicolon after that, and now we will point to our database that we want to connect to. In my case, the database is SQL Apps. Okay, so I'm going to say database equals SQL apps. 
all right? And finally, we need to uh, supply a user and password with uh, proper credentials to access our database. So I'm going to be using my uh, default uh, SQL Server admin account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say user equals SA, that's the default account, and then I just need to supply a password. The password parameter is PWD and set this to equal whatever your password is to connect and say password one not very secure but that's just uh, yeah, perfect for a test so um, I'm gonna finalize that with one last uh, semicolon not sure if that last one is absolutely required but I like to put it in there anyway so um, then I'm gonna drop down and uh, say public SQL command, and this is what you use for um, querying your database after you've successfully connected to it. So I'm going to say as SQL command, or command, sorry. Uh, we probably won't actually be using that in this part, but in the next segment we will. So I'm just going to add it now. Um, Finally, to uh, test whether our connection is successful or not, we're going to create a function. I'm going to say public function has connection. And I'm just going to return this as a Boolean value. So I'm going to say as Boolean. And in this function, what we'll do is we will simply uh, test our SQL con, our connection string and see if it successfully opens and closes. If not, we're going to fire back um, an exception message to tell us why it failed. And to do this, what we're going to use is a try catch. And this allows um, an error to occur without actually crashing your application. It's, uh, uh, you can catch the exceptions and return them gracefully and then return back to your application if it fails. So. Um, Let's go ahead and just test our SQL connection by saying sqlcon.open. Now, if everything we've supplied here is um, accurate, then this should not fail. And if it is successful, then let's go ahead and clean up after ourselves and close that connection. Now, if there is an error, we're going to want to return that value um, or we're going to want to at least have maybe some way of catching that you could dump it to a log file or something I'm just going to say uh, so show me a message box telling me why it failed so to do that we'll, s we'll capture the exception dot message so we'll say ex dot message now as a function we need to return a value so I'm going to say if uh, the opening close occurs successfully. I'm going to say return true. Otherwise, return false. All right. So let's go ahead and test this connection and see what happens. See if my uh, authentication information here is accurate. Uh, to do this, I'm going to go back to my main form and I'm just going to create a new instance of this uh, SQL control class that we created. Um, but to do that, I'm just going to say dim uh, SQL as new a new instance of SQL control. Okay, so we're going to create a new instance of our SQL control class that we created, and then we can use that to call uh, the has connection function. So what we'll do is we'll say if SQL dot has connection equals true, then uh, re return to us a message box that says successfully connected. And let's go ahead and run that and see if it works. Might take me a moment here. Uh, this old 
box that I'm using is a SQL Server is incredibly old and slow. So uh, as you can see, the connection was a success. It was able to connect to the database and close its connection successfully. So let's go ahead and force it to crash. I'm going to go back to my SQL control and deliberately set one of these values to an incorrect value. Um, I'm just going to put a D in my username and then I'm going to run that again and it immediately failed. It tried to log in and it says it failed for user set so my catch exception worked properly and then it returned back to my main form without actually killing my application. So as you can see uh, it was a complete success and we can also uh, try altering another parameter here. Let's uh, mess up the database connection and put a T in front of that run that and boom it caught another exception cannot open the database uh, requested by the login so it noticed that uh, the that was a failure as well so and return that to the way it was so as you can see uh, it's really very simple to connect to a SQL database. Now if you uh, stick around uh, the next tutorial I will show you how to query the database um, and return values from it from our fields and uh, we'll do this in a couple of different ways. We'll uh, retrieve values and put them in a form as well as just testing with message boxes and things like that. Uh, there are a number of uh, other ways to return your data as well as uh, populating data grids and uh, hopefully we'll be able to cover that in a an upcoming tutorial as well. So I hope you found this uh, helpful for getting started. Um, if this was helpful, uh, please share it with anybody else that you think would find it useful. And if you like it, uh, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for coming along, and I look forward to sharing more with you on the next step. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.